morning. Welcome to, First Pre- Welcome to First Presbyterian Church. I'm delighted to see you all here this morning. Equally delighted to have those of you joining us online to be with us in worship that way today. I'd like to say a special word of welcome to visitors in both places. We're particularly grateful for your presence here and hope that you'll find this time of worship together to be meaningful. It is Pentecost Sunday, uh, days where uh, if you have a very creative spouse, preachers get to sport new cool stoles uh, and pyramids, so we depart from our regular stuff today uh, to celebrate the, the, the gift of the Holy Spirit in, into our lives. And so as part of that, we'll have a communion this Sunday. Uh, we're going to celebrate communion by intinction today. So at that time in the service, you'll be invited to come forward. And there'll be gluten-free bread in the middle, and regular bread will be served to you. Uh, you'll be pre- given a piece of bread uh, to then dip in the cup uh, and take the elements and return to your seat. If you're not comfortable coming forward this morning, uh, please just stay where you are. And when uh, the lines are done, we will bring the elements to you. Uh, uh, so we look forward to that celebration as we always do. If you're at home with us today, please, anything will do. Just uh, uh, whatever you have available to you is appropriate. And we would love for you to be able to partake uh, in the elements during that time and worship with us. Uh, I'd now like to ask Angie Scholler to come forward with a word about a special, one of our denominational offerings. Good morning. morning. I'm here to talk about the Pentecost offering that we will receive today. Um, How many times have we seen an amazing building like this one and thought, how did they do that? The skill and craftsmanship needed to not only imagine it, but to build it and make it sturdy enough to withstand the test of time and so beautiful to lift our spirits heavenward. But what of people? We watch as musicians, artists, and athletes astound us with their skills. And even though we know that the raw talent is honed through years of practice, patience, and persistence, we still look with awe at these accomplishments and say, how did they do that? They did it because someone saw a spark that with the right teaching, coaching, leadership, and practice could lead to great things. Here are some examples of what the Pentecost offering does. Um, for example, someone working with good successes, excuse me, good success academies in New Jersey recognized Tariq's academic potential and helped him pursue his dream of studying computer science. A young, ad- a young adult volunteer named Eureka blossomed in Peru. And a shy teenager named Grace boldly connected with her peers at a statewide youth conference. How did they do that? They were lifted up. They were mentored and they were encouraged to grow into the person that God was calling them to be. Fanning that spark, the raw talents and abilities within young people throughout the church builds strong and gifted leaders that God can use. Your gifts to the Pentecost offering assure that these young people of God have opportunities to participate in programs as varied as the Young Adult Volunteer Program, Presbyterian Youth Triennium, and the Educated Child Transform the World National Initiative. The Holy Spirit remains with us this Pentecost Sunday, connecting us with the church of the past, continuing to inspire the church of today, and pointing us to the church of the future. Thank you for your support of the Pentecost offering. And with our deacon's moment, Wayne. Well, good morning from the deacons. Uh, In just three weeks on June the 17th, 40 from our church will be attending a Dodgers baseball game downtown. If you signed up for those tickets and cannot go, please let the office know by June the 9th, so if possible, so that someone else can use those tickets. Uh, Two weeks ago, the women of the church received beautiful roses on Mother's Day. Those roses were purchased from Curbside Flowers, whose goal, as stated on their website, is that they are a full-service flower shop bringing beauty to our community while providing employment and training to people transitioning out of homelessness in OKC. We are glad to help them in that endeavor. And gentlemen, be sure to attend church on Father's Day because we will also have a gift for you. 
Next Sunday, June the 4th, the deacons will once again be doing Eucharistic visits to those members who are no longer able to attend church with us. If you know of any member who would like to receive communion in their home or uh, their assisted center, living center, please let one of the deacons know. And if you would like to help join us at some point in serving communion, uh, reach out to one of the deacons. On July the 9th, we will be holding our annual back to school lunch to collect supplies for urban mission and more details will be forthcoming in July. And once again, we want to thank all of you for your continued, continued support of the deacons. Your givings for these events and the others that we'll be doing throughout the year is only made possible by your contributions. Thank you very much. Thank you, Blaine. Uh, there are envelopes in the pews, or if you want to put in the memo line of a check, Deacons Fund, you can help support the deacons in that way. Please do note the announcements in the bulletin uh, today. Four, is that, it's just one announcement actually, but there's a golf tournament coming up for Urban Mission, and if you've never had an opportunity uh, to participate in that, and if you are better than I am, and I shoot an honest 168, uh, you're welcome to come on out and have a fun day. So please note that, and then uh, an invitation for this afternoon, Miss Amanda Ogden. Good morning. Um, I will be brief. I just wanted to invite everyone out to the parking lot after church. During discovery time, the kids are going to decorate their bicycles, and we're going to have a bike parade in the back into the parking lot near the um, near the new playground. And then there are hot dogs and chips and drinks and cookies for everyone after the parade's over. So we hope you'll come out. Thanks. Let us now prepare our hearts and minds for worship. Please rise now in body or spirit, however you're comfortable, and join me in the call to worship. The word of the Lord to the prophet, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old shall dream dreams and your young shall see visions.
join me now in the prayer of the day. God, our creator, earth has many languages, but your gospel proclaims your love to all nations in one heavenly tongue. Make us messengers of the good news that, through the power of your spirit, all the world may unite in one song of praise through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. When we come into the holy presence of God, our own humanity is laid bare. When we stand in the living presence of truth, our own falsehood is revealed. People of God, let us acknowledge who we are and ask our ever-present God to forgive us. Almighty God, you poured your spirit upon gathered disciples, creating bold tongues, open ears, and a new community of faith. We confess that we hold back the force of your spirit among us. We do not listen for your word of grace. Speak the good news of your love, for live as people made one in Christ. Have mercy on us, O God. Transform our timid lives by the power of your spirit, and fill us with a flaming desire to be your faithful people, doing your will for the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Anyone who is in Christ is a new creation. The past is left behind. Everything has become fresh and new. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Amen. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. To this peace, we are called as members of a single body. The peace of Christ be with you. Good morning. Okay, so I want you to look around, and I think you can agree with me that this is a pretty great church. Yes? Maybe. Maybe. Like, look at the stained glass. It's really a pretty, pretty room. 
and see all those people out there at your congregation, they're all very nice people. And if you ever had a problem, every one of them would help you, which is really cool, right? And we have a great minister, wave to Pastor John. There he is over there. We have, <laughs> we have good music, right, because of Puffer and John and the choir. Wave to them. They're really a really great part of our church, right? Yeah. <laughs> and <clears throat> did you know that this is not the only church in Oklahoma City? Did you know that? Yeah. Did you know that there are lots of other churches in Oklahoma City? Yeah. Yeah, a lot. I tried to Google how many, but I couldn't, I couldn't get a number. And yet, your parents picked this church, which was very smart on their part, I think, right? <clears throat> and the thing is, is that they get to choose because we live in a country where we have freedom of religion. Did you know, though, that there are places where you don't get to choose? You have to do whatever the government wants you to, whatever church the government wants you to attend. And you don't even get to worship when you're in the way you want to in that church. So we are very fortunate here because we have freedom of religion. And that happens because... Sadly, we've had to have some people lose their lives over helping us keep our freedom, some soldiers in the past. And because of that, we have a special day. It happens tomorrow. It's called Memorial Day. And that is when we remember all those soldiers, men and women, who it's tomorrow, actually. We're celebrating today outside with our bites and our, and our hot dogs. But... It's really tomorrow, and tomorrow we, especially at 3 o'clock, you're supposed to take a moment to pray and thank for our wonderful country and our freedom of religion. All right, can we pray with me? Heavenly Father, thank you for the church and the freedom to worship in it as we please. Today we remember and honor the ultimate sacrifice of the men and women along with their families who made this freedom possible. Now let us pray the prayer that, that, that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. No running. Amen.
Let us pray. Living God, help us to hear your holy word with open hearts so that we may truly understand and understanding that we may believe and believing that we may follow in all faithfulness and obedience, seeking your honor and glory in all that we do. Through Christ our Lord, amen. The scripture reading is from John 7, 37 through 39. On the last day of the festival, the great day, while Jesus was standing there, he cried out, let anyone who is thirsty come to me and let the one who believes in me drink. As the scripture has said, out of the believer's heart shall flow rivers of living water. Now he said this about the spirit, which believers in him were to receive. For as yet there was no spirit, because Jesus was not yet glorified. This is the word of the Lord.
I'm going to just go ahead and get it out there. <laughs> I'm in a tricky place today. Um, I'm 52 years old, uh, and for the first time in my life, um, working with this passage this week, um, I feel like I've gotten an understanding of the Holy Spirit in a way that is different um, than in the past. And so many times I fear, um, because I've done it, uh, that as Protestants, sometimes we go through the motions of worship uh, without the meaning that's there. And I think there's times in life where that's appropriate. Part of worship is the discipline uh, of coming and being together in fellowship and sitting there. And, and some weeks you'll be keenly aware of what's happening, and some weeks your mind will be other places. And I think both those experiences are divinely inspired. Um, but in seminary, as much as I hated Hebrew and the fact that it caused me to squeeze a three-year degree into four years, I appreciate the language. And one of the words they spend a lot of time on is ruach. And um, ruach is almost spoken with um, fear and trepidation because of the power of what you're saying. Ruach is the Holy Spirit, um, the breath of God, the literal breath of God that is breathed in to us and was breathed in to the disciples uh, on that first uh, Pentecost. And so I hope we don't uh, too quickly jump to Memorial Day um, without taking time to really think about the significance of this day, Pentecost, a festival uh, in the church year um, that might be more special than we even realized. So today is Pentecost Sunday. The day of Pentecost is the culmination of the great 50 days of Easter, and it celebrates the gift of the Spirit to the body of Christ, to believers, to the church. On the day of Pentecost, we remember the gift of the Holy Spirit's descending, described like a mighty rush of wind and a flame to inspire the church's proclamation of Christ's rising to tell the story of the resurrection and to empower the church's mission and ministry to the entire world. We learn of the event in the second chapter of Acts and in the second chapter of Joel, but Pentecost in the Hebrew, bringing Shavuot in Hebrew, brings to an end this season of Easter Thinking of Easter as a 50 days ending at Pentecost is a pattern that comes after the ancient Jewish festival of seven weeks that extended from the beginning of the barley festival and ended on the wheat festival or the festival of weeks, W-E-E-K-S, or Shavuot, Shavuot, sorry. The festival of weeks later uh, became Pentecost by Greek-speaking Jews. And in the Jewish tradition, Shavuot also marks the giving of the law to Moses at Sinai. According to the story that we get in Acts, God gave the gift of the Holy Spirit to empower witness to the resurrection. Sounds from heaven, some sort of cosmic language. The rush of that mighty ruach, that wind, the spirit, the breath, invaded the house where the apostles gathered. It appeared to them they describe as tongues of fire, whatever it was, a power, the unseen power of God moved among them. It changed them. It gripped them. The Holy Spirit is the unseen, like the wind, which is why the Old Testament calls it the Ruach of Yahweh, the wind or breath of God. The Spirit is the unseenness of God that is working among us. The Holy Spirit breaks us out of our preoccupations with ourselves and frees us to serve neighbors, loosens our grasp on possessions, and reorients us to loving people. New creation, new creation is what Pentecost is about. 
Pentecost is new creation. On the day of Pentecost, we celebrate God's gift of the Holy Spirit, which draws us together as one people. The Holy Spirit helps us comprehend what God is doing in the world and empowers us to proclaim good news in word and in deed. God's plan of reconciling all people in the name of Christ. Without the gift of the Holy Spirit, the church simply dries up. The church withers away, and we are left only with our broken selves. But with the Holy Spirit, all things are possible. If anyone is thirsty, let me come, let him come to me and drink. Jesus says this right at the end of the ritual of the Feast of Tabernacles. For a week, the people have been celebrating the gift of water. Water that we take for granted was not taken for granted in Jesus' time. For a week, people have been thanking God for water. Water that God has provided for their physical sustenance. Now Jesus is telling them that he is capable of satisfying their spiritual thirst. And if this actually happened on the eighth day, when the water ritual is not observed, a dry day, Jesus' promise to satisfy their thirst takes on an added impact. Verse 38 is really the meat. Let the one who believes in me drink. As the scripture has said, out of the believer's heart shall flow rivers of living water. He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, from within them will flow rivers of water. It's good to go back to the Greek. It's more visceral. This does not flow from the heart. The literal translation means it is flowing from the belly. You see, the people in Jesus' time thought the belly was the center of all emotions, our equivalent to the heart. But Jesus is saying that rivers of living water shall flow from the deepest part of a believer's being. And the believer becomes a font of that blessing, becomes a conduit through which Jesus' words, rivers of the living water, can flow to others, made possible by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is not making a debut appearance today. The Holy Spirit, this ruach, the breath, the wind, the Spirit of God, is pervasive throughout the Hebrew Scriptures. It appears 389 times in the Old Testament alone. The Ruach, God's Spirit, hovered over the surface of the waters in Genesis, right there in first chapter, verse 2. The Ruach of God came mightily upon Saul. Ezra prayed to thank God for God's good spirit, God's Ruach given to instruct Israel. When the Lord sends forth his Ruach, life is created. Psalm says you renew the face of the ground. God's Ruach is an overflowing stream that Isaiah says shifts entire nations. And it goes on and on. Because God's Ruach changes the believer's heart. Through the Holy Spirit, God empowers us to grow in faith. God lets us make more mature decisions and live more faithful lives. As changed people, we can change the world. The Spirit gives us the will, as Jesus said, to be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. None of you are perfect, neither am I, but we can try. And all that God asks of us is that we try. The Holy Spirit gives believers the authority to accurately interpret the Bible. It's the Holy Spirit through which we filter our readings of Scripture. Just as the Spirit enabled the original writers of Scripture to tell truthfully about God, the Holy Spirit allows us to truthfully understand the Scripture, Jesus, and everything else we need to know. The Spirit also gives authority to the church 
It gives the church, it gives us authority to act in the powerful name of God for the good of humanity in this room, in this city, in this world. The Spirit gives every person here a sense of calling to a special function in the world. In keeping with God's providence and Jesus' summon to follow him. The Westminster Confession of Faith is a historic Presbyterian document, and it refers to the Holy Spirit as a source of God's grace and the only efficient agent in the application of redemption. For all humans, the confession says the Spirit convicts them of sin, moves them to repentance, and persuades and enables them to embrace Jesus Christ by faith. It further states that God is willing to give the Spirit to all who ask. That's where I would debate just a little bit with them because I question that. I think the Spirit might already be inside you. I don't know if it's asking for something to be added or just responding to something that is already there. When we embrace Jesus Christ by faith, we are never the same person again. We are changed. We are not perfected, but we are able to be effective for Christ as we seek to live God's purpose daily. Maybe a believer's heart isn't enough. Maybe Jesus wants our bellies too. As we celebrate the Lord's Supper in a few minutes, We will consume bread. We will consume juice. It will go to our belly. This time, let's not just bring our hearts to the table of grace. Let's bring our belly to experience this amazing act of love and grace for what it is. Bring nothing less than the center of your emotions, your core, your very essence to this table. It will nourish the deepest part of your being. Jesus is said the rivers of living water shall flow from the deepest parts of the believer's being. Shall flow. That means it cannot be contained. Your living water overflows onto a parched earth and makes a real difference in the lives of those around you. That's what living in the midst of God's purpose for your life feels like. The Brief Statement of Faith, the most recent Presbyterian confessional document, also speaks about the Holy Spirit. I invite you, as we say it together, to listen for a word or a phrase that jumps out at you. Sit with that thought. And bring that with you to the table and breathe deeply and be filled again with nothing short of the breath of God. This Pentecost, let us experience again, but also for the very first time, Ruach. In lieu of the Nicene Creed that is printed in your bulletin, I hope that you have an insert that has the brief statement of faith on it. I would invite you to rise in body or spirit now as we share in that together. Let us confess our faith. We trust in God, the Holy Spirit, everywhere the giver and renewer of life. The Spirit justifies us by grace through faith sets us free to accept ourselves and to love God and neighbor, and binds us together with all believers in the one body of Christ, the Church, the same Spirit who inspired the prophets and apostles, rules our faith and life in Christ through Scripture, engages us through the word proclaimed, claims us in the waters of baptism, feeds us with the bread of life and the cup of salvation, and calls women and men to all ministries of the church in a broken and fearful world 
the Spirit gives us courage to pray without ceasing, to witness among all people to Christ as Lord and Savior, to unmask idolatries in church and culture, to hear the voices of people long silenced, and to work with others for justice, freedom, and peace. Amen. Friends, this is the table of God, table of Jesus Christ, set in the context of Presbyterian worship. It is not a Presbyterian table, but a table open to all uh, who desire what it offers. So come, uh, find nourishment uh, for your faith journey. Let us now pray together. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is truly right and our greatest joy to give you thanks and praise, eternal God, creator and ruler of the universe. With the majesty of your hand, you shape this world and all that is in it. By your Holy Spirit, you breathed life into human form and set us on the earth to praise and serve you. When we wandered from your ways and were lost in sin's wilderness, your truth burned in, our heart, in the hearts of prophets who called your people to return to the path of righteousness. In the fullness of time, you sent your Son to be our deliverer. In every age, your Holy Spirit has led us in your ways. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with choirs of angels and with all the faithful of every time and place who forever sing to the glory of your name.
You are holy, O God of majesty, and blessed is Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. We give you thanks that the Lord Jesus, on the night before he died, took bread, and after giving thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant, sealed in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these your gifts of bread and wine, that the bread we break and the cup we bless may be the communion of the body and blood of Christ. Through Christ, all glory and honor are yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit and the Holy Church, now and forever. body of Christ broken for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. This one's going to go in the middle. No, that goes in the middle. Okay. The gifts of God for the people of God.
Let us pray. Gracious God, we may who we who have received this sacrament live in the unity of your Holy Spirit, that we may show forth your gifts to all the world. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Friends, there's a certain power that comes with the organ bench. We are going to receive an offering today. We just weren't going to have an offertory. Uh, but there are offering plates located at the doors, and um, we would appreciate your support in the ministry of the church. And to stay in Kirk, let us say a brief prayer of dedication. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you so much uh, for the generosity of our members and the gifts that will be, be received today. We pray uh, that they go out from this place and make the difference in the world you would have them make. Amen. Friends, go now in peace, knowing that in the goodness of God you were born, and in God's mercy you have been kept all the days of your life. And as a sign of God's never-failing grace, each life has been redeemed for a purpose. So I charge you to go out from this place and continue living in the midst of God's purpose for your life. And as you go, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and bring you peace this day and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>